There he is. There he is. The man, the myth. I can't call you a legend. I know, I know. But Claude, you know, it's as a as a gunner, as a gunner for almost all my life. It, it, it's a. I can't believe you're on, you're on our our, our our program. It's 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 a true honor, and I, I really really appreciate you taking the time uh, to to come on our show. I'm a British guy, but I'm just so I grew up on that show. Just on, uh, I had a lot of things to say on, on YouTube, uh, and I appreciate that. Okay. I know your your uh, your friend just passed away, and I know you you. I mean, well, I guess start off, start with that Ernie, right? That that uh, your friend who's who's also a lifetime gooner, and um, you know you were giving a tribute to him on online as well. Yeah, it's, it's very sad. It's very very sad. Very sad for me because I used to drive him to the coach on the way on the away trips. He was in. Incredible guys. Uh, he used to go home and away uh, up until a couple of years, even Europe. But um, uh, a couple of years ago, he even went on to European games, but he still went home and away domestically. He was an incredible guy, absolutely incredible man. And it's a very sad loss. Hello? Yeah, you're here. I can hear you, definitely. You're good. So, uh, Claude, tell us about yourself, first of all, like, you know, your background, how you got into the club, how you got into soccer, football. I, I started going in, uh, in 1972 uh, towards the Arsenal and, um, uh, uh, and through, uh, late, uh, through, the, through the 80s I started going uh, to the away games as well, home and away, and then Gradually, I've been going every game, um, but not. I mean, I've missed a few because of either illness or, or when my mum, <laughs> when my mum died. But I missed a quite a bit of uh, football. But I, 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 I just enjoy it. I love my football. Okay. And why Arsenal? Why, why did you pick that club? Well, I was born uh, half a mile down the road from in Holloway Road, so it's always going to be my team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, great, definitely. Ellis? It's an honor to be with us, Claude. Uh, we were just talking before you went on air about how Giroud, who was the, the savior of Arsenal, <laughs> against <laughs> Olympiacos. I mean, things are looking up for him, even in the, uh, in the international uh, stage, as we've got news yeah. that Benzema might, might be excluded from the squad. Uh, <laughs> how, do you think, how do you think Giroud is, is, is faring at Arsenal so far? And, I thought, I, thought, yeah, I thought the other night was probably his best game for the club. I mean, it was superb the other night. But I might, listen, I say it how it is. I'll, I'll criticise when they play bad, and I'll, uh, if I don't see any effort going in, I'll say it. That's the way I am. I, um, some people say I'm too. Sometimes, but I, I, I do analyse analyze it too much. But. <laughs> Richard Rubin, I think if he produces that consistently, you know, things will get a lot better. Yeah, you, you've uh, recorded as saying he's a, a human lamppost, which was, I thought yeah. was pretty funny. I was getting a uh, frustration, you know, when I see a player, I don't feel it's moving the bad pitch enough for me. I, I'm getting frustrated. There are games he's gone missing, he had to put, uh, put his effort in. That's my opinion, but... Oh, you know, I, I mean, I had it shut down by a few Arsenal fans, but it was great to see, it was great for the team. No, but Claude, you know what, you always, like you said, you always keep it real. I mean, when they're not playing well, you're not going to be like a, a homer, where you call here in States, a homer who's like, oh yeah, they're great, they're great, like like uh, that full kit wanger tie. Sorry, I've got my It's okay, it's okay. Sorry. Yeah, it's... Okay. it's, okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's um, I, I say it as it is. Um, I mean, I, 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 I'm not, I, people say I'm anti wanker I'm not anti wanker I, I support the football club, and uh, if I see the manager is making mistakes, I say he's making mistakes. At the end of the day, it's not it's Arsenal FC. It's not Arsenal FC. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I love Arsenal Wenger. He got us a stadium. Yeah. He's a yeah. wonderful coach. 
But we we need another squad. And what I mean is we should have a better a better bench. If we had a better bench, we wouldn't have to rely so much on Giroud, on on a Walcott, uh, Welbeck, wherever hell he is in the world. I don't know where Welbeck is. He's still uh, you know, uh, I think he's still injured. But you know, we we could. Go ahead. I'm oh, sorry, mate. I'm your. You're cutting out there. Even the other night, I thought we done quite well with uh, all the injuries that we we had. Uh, we still put a good good side out the other night, and we won convincingly. So things are not too bad, but we we can't afford to have another one, though. Especially if it's Mesut Ozil. But we we really are now on the last. Um, how do I say? Legs. Let's say we're on the last legs. Yeah. Now 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 on the last legs. Yeah. Do you think we can go forward in the Champions League, or should we have just kind of capitulated and go for the go for the title for the EPL? No. I think the Champions League, the Champions League is the most we have, but should we get into bonus? Uh, our main concern is the Premier League. I think that's the main to, to put in a really big challenge for the Premier League. This is our big chance this year. Yeah. Do you, do we think you? I mean, it's an obvious question with you, Claude. But should we buy in this in in the uh, transfer window coming up? And who should we buy? Uh, another striker, a, a CDM, central defensive midfielder. I think you've spot on there. I think we do need a central defensive midfield player because I'm not sure whether uh, Flamini can really last the whole season, and uh, Callum Chambers is a bit untried in that position. So I think maybe one more central defensive midfield player. And yes, another striker would be would be a benefit. I'm hearing there's a, a Russian striker. I can't really pronounce his name that we're interested in. So maybe that would be the answer. But we do need to bolster the squad by about two, two or three players. Yeah. And what about the hair model Arteta? Is he out? Is he out, out already? I mean, he's just become a coach. He's so off the plot there. Like he shouldn't be even be on the pitch. Arteta, Mikel Arteta. So I think. Uh, uh, Mikel Arteta. Arteta. Oh, well, Arteta's had his day. I mean, um, he's a, he's, I think he's good to have around the dressing room, but he's uh, he's limited to what he can do now. I think he's uh, he's not really a defensive midfield player anyway, so that's not his position. So, but I don't think he's the answer now. Yeah, it's like Mathieu Flamini. He's. He's also passed it, but you know, every once in a while he'll have a strike of brilliance where he have a great game. But he's not the answer. And Callum Chambers, he's a defender. No, because if you want, go ahead. Yeah, but apparently he, he, he can play. He, he can develop into that position. But he's still a very young guy. Uh, with um, with Flamini, I mean, I was watching him against uh, Sunderland, and sometimes he was committing himself too much forward. And it, I mean, a better team might have punished us on that occasion, but I mean, we've got to just hopefully wait for to January, and hopefully something will be done. Ellis, no, uh, Claude, why don't we see any members of the Invincibles in the in the Arsenal wingers personnel? Uh, Patrick Guerra comes to mind. He was he was recruited by Man City, and you know they he sort of had a few positions there before now being. Uh, Becoming the coach of New York City FC, which we're we're totally looking forward to how that's going to pan out. Uh, what do you think? What do you think occurs within that that inside that back room of Arsene Wenger? Maybe Arsene doesn't want people uh, people that are uh, outspoken. I think Arsene likes to run it more himself. Um, so maybe uh, I don't I don't think he wants people that will. Uh, um, Have too much of a say. I think that's one of the main problems with us. I don't think he likes to delegate too much. I, I know that Henri is uh, is coaching the youth team, or he has some type of something to do with the youth team. But yeah, other than that, I don't see you know Perez or anybody else going in there and really you know I, I guess establishing their authority as an invincible. You know, that's a big deal. It's a really big deal. You know. Yeah. Well, apparently. apparently uh... On uh, Perez, he's working with the players. I've, I've seen him a couple of oh, times. Oh, he is. Working with the okay, good. Yeah, good. yeah. Nice, nice. But um, De 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 I think Dennis, at the moment, is at Ajax. So 
but I think he could be future in the, in the future. You know, I think he's just developing. At I, I could I could see him coming in the future. Claude, talk to us about about Highbury. Um, it's a place that some people will never see. You know, all they have is the Emirates, which is a great stadium, very you know, obviously state of the art, et cetera, et cetera. But the old football grounds, they're they're a thing of the past now. What was it like to go to Highbury? I never got to go. It's, uh, it was fantastic. It's a very unique stadium. It was a fantastic stadium, um, but of course it, we we were at we outgrown it. See, I mean, we, could only, we couldn't build on it, and it was only thirty eight thousand capacity in the end. But in the old days, you, with, with standing, you could get over you could get sixty thousand plus, yeah, with the standard. But in the old days, that. But then the capacity went down to thirty eight with the all seating and. Uh, it's not, it's not really big enough, but as I say, I do miss the old stadium because it had a, it had a bit of a, it had a more of an atmosphere than this this place. Um, that has, uh, it doesn't. Yeah. I, I okay, have to, uh, Do you get where I'm coming from? Yes, definitely. I, I understand where you're coming from. Definitely. Uh, what? I happened to go there in October to watch Arsenal and Manchester United. And uh, one of the fans told me that, you know, if you walk down a few blocks, you see the old Highbury, which I did. Actually, it's on the way to, yeah. the, uh, to the underground. So I got a chance. Yeah. How, how, do the, <laughs> how do the fans feel about that being turned out into a luxury uh, condo, condo, yeah. condo unit? I mean, shouldn't it have remained as in some sort of museum or, or, yeah. or, or a training ground it's, it's, for the current that's, team? That's the sad part. Well, you know, because uh, Wenger doesn't want to spend the two hundred million dollars we have. You know, come on. <laughs> yeah, well, he's a very stubborn man, isn't he? I he mean, really uh, is. He really is. I mean, you know, uh, you see, this bought, bought Welbeck uh, right under his nose. He didn't even know that the guy was bought, and he shows up for training. Oh, who? Aren't you a yeah. Man United player? <laughs> I think originally he only wanted him on loan, but um, but then we done the deal with. Uh, but he was actually in uh, in the Vatican at the time, wasn't he? When that was going on. Yeah, definitely. So, so um, Claude, uh, talk, talk to us about Spurs. I, I I love hating Spurs, and you know it's funny. I, I love them to death. I love to hate them. But a few words about Spurs. Well, this year they're doing all right, haven't they? I mean, they they've always um, they always uh, seem to be. For, for a long, long time, not much of a rival to us, and uh, that's no, no disrespect. But um, but suddenly they've, they've uh, this season they're looking a very, very strong side, and uh, I got criticised with my uh, I said that they are title contenders, and uh, I think they are. I mean, they're, they're, they've really uh, as much as I hate to say it, but they've really developed under Pochettino. And they are, they are a real threat this year. Yeah, they are. I mean, I, I, I agree with you. You know, title contenders, maybe not. I think Lamelo's playing pretty well. Harry Kane, you know, wow. He, we, we're, as Arsenal fans, we want him to fail, but he keeps on going. He keeps on scoring goals. So, you know, that, that's, yeah. that's good. The only, the only thing I think with them is they've got a lot of, good, uh, a lot of young players and they'll probably have a bit of a dip in, in uh, towards uh, one part of the season. And then play as if they, you know, yeah. put their importance to them. They're all going to have a dip down again, so they they might not last the pace. But at the moment, they look very dangerous. So, what do you think of the title? Do we, I think, we have a little bit of a chance. Man City keeps stumbling. Spurs, maybe. Man City, uh, Man United. I don't think they got it. Liverpool. I think I think there's five or six. Go ahead. To apologise, you're cutting out a lot. So if I'm interrupting you, I'm, no, that's all right. That's all right. I'm not interrupting. It's just that the uh, you're on my finger. Um, um, 
I think it's a five, six horse race uh, at the moment. It's, it's five or six teams that have got a good chance. Uh, I think Leicester won't be up there. I think Leicester will gradually come after Christmas. We'll come back a bit. Once they've got past their 40 point target that they, 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 they want to get, I think they'll, they'll just realise they've got over the 40 points. Yeah. Uh, realise uh, the safety zone will come in. Um, Spurs, as I say, Man City, of course, are going to be hot favourites still. I think Manchester United uh, um, uh, are going to be, could be, will be up there because they don't concede many. I'm glad they did that the other night. But they're not scoring. The other, it went the other way the other night, didn't it? They, they were getting, going well, going, conceding um, goals, which they weren't in the past. Um, you know, forget Chelsea, I think, they had the real Chelsea hat now, I think they'll bring it in. Um, so, how, how is it? Oh, of course, of course, Liverpool. But then again, with Liverpool, they, they, when you, when they seem to be going out, and have a result like they did the other night. I mean, losing to Newcastle. So, no, it's any much league, really. Any Yeah. Like, how is it? I mean, I'm, I'm a huge, I'm anti-Manchester United because that's when I got into soccer. Uh, you know, we were going up against Manchester United before the oil money came to Chelsea and, you know, the oligarch money came to came to Chelsea and, and Man City. So, Man, Man United is also always a club I'll hate. Uh, more than Spurs because Spurs is like whatever like they're like the young younger brother, you know Annoying younger brother uh, down down the road How is it? It's, it's great to see them in the Euro, Euro League now Euro, the Europa League Well, I can hear you Yeah, can you hear me back yeah, yeah, I can hear you yeah. definitely right. Yeah, um Man United was always the, the team, wasn't it? I mean, it was just Arsenal and Man United it was for years and years. But as you say, since Chelsea and Man City come in with the money, they've upstepped, they've up, up the. Uh, and, uh, but what's happening now in the, in the league, though, is that even the teams below are getting stronger and stronger because the money the money's spreading through the league. So that's why you're getting a lot of results where the lower teams are beating the top teams. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think the league this year will probably be won with less than 80 points. Yep. Claude, do you think it's a coincidence that Premier League clubs are struggling in the Champions League as they did last year? And as they could have, could have done this year as well. They were pretty close, both Chelsea and Arsenal. They came to the last day to secure their berth to the next round. And we see Man U was... Was uh, was beaten by Wolfsburg, a team who is currently uh, fourth or fifth in the Bundesliga. Yeah. Well, it don't look good, does it? I mean, but everyone keeps. I think that what's happening is the. Uh, um, I don't know. I, mean, I can't understand it, but they like, didn't get Man City uh, qualified for top of their group, so uh, they had a card group. And they still finished top of their group, so. It's very difficult to say. I think what's let Man United, well, uh, unfortunately, when it comes to the, uh, that game the other night, they did have a lot of key key players out. They're missing Rooney. They missed. They were missing uh, uh, Alexis. I think was it no, no, These are very important. They're very important to side uh, players. But uh, I, I was I was uh, I I was quite surprised how. Oh, hey. sorry, I put my grandson here, listen. <laughs> it's all right, it's okay. No, don't do that, don't do that. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's all right, don't worry. Is he an Arsenal fan as well, or has he changed? Is he an Arsenal fan, your grandson? He's my grandson, he's my lovely grandson, Josh. Hey, Josh. Say hello. Anyway, so um, uh, you think the focus is on the Premier League, or they can handle both competitions, or or you think it's I think, a? It's I, think, I think Man United are a bit short, whereas we've got I think a few play, a few uh, players that are more. It showed that the other night, didn't it? I mean, they they beat 
they're badly misidling the other night, badly, badly. Claude, talk to us about uh, Arsenal Fan TV and Robbie and, and the crew, Bully, uh, Mo, uh, Ty, the full kit wanker. With, <laughs> what, what, how do you guys get along? Yeah, we all get on in the end. I mean, we have our rounds. We, we have a different opinions. We're all different characters, I suppose, in a way. <laughs> um, how some do you... of us blame the crap. Some of us... <laughs> Yeah, you, you. Yeah, you. You. You and Ty go at it back and forth because Ty is like, whatever Arsene Wenger does is fine with him, and it can't be that way. You know, you. It's your club. It's and you want them to succeed, and you. If you see things that uh, the club can do, and you feel they could do them and, and and be successful, why doesn't he buy more players? You know, it, it it makes perfect sense to do that, and he doesn't buy them. You know. Ty and uh, I can't knock him for doing that, but that's the way he is. Ty is, um, uh, he can be positive even after we lost 8 to Man United, you know, when we I lost remember that. that time, he was still very, very positive. He, 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 he won't say, he won't say <laughs> anything, he'll just go, oh, well, that's bad luck. Or, <laughs> but that's, uh, that's, his, that's his character, I can't. That's the way he is. We're all different, you know. We're all different. We all see things differently. Yeah. And we've had we've had some we've had major rows, but we make up in the end because I get frustrated. I get frustrated after a game, as you probably have seen. I know you're like the superstar of, of uh, Arsenal fan TV. You're you're like you know the co-star. It's it's great. No, no, no super. No, I don't like this word superstar or super fan. No, there's no superstars here. We're all we're all we're all fans, and even the um. Even the fan, other fans that come on the channel, they're all the same. We've all got different opinions. We're all, there's a couple of young guys, a few young guys now coming on. They're probably better off having them on there than me in the next few uh, couple of years because people get tired of my voice, you know? Nah, well, you're, you're the and man. I mean, trust me, we, we come to, I, I always click on your videos <laughs> first because you always keep it real, like you said. You you, you tell it from, from, from the heart and you make sense, you know? like. Come on. Sometimes they weren't playing up to speed, you know? Yeah, we're all different. We're all different characters. I mean, I don't know if you've seen our, our Nigerian friend, Kilaji. He's very yeah, yeah. funny. He's a very funny guy as well. We've very got, funny. Uh, of course, Chris Hudson, but he doesn't come on so much when he's on. He's, he's, he's quite a funny guy as well. They're all great Arsenal fans. They all love the club. All, we've all got one thing in common. We all support the football club. We all love the football club. Yeah. But we diff we we have different views. We 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 look at it in a different way than everyone else. But we all love the football club. You know. Yeah. So, but I they're all different characters, and no one no one is superstar. No one is a superstar. We're just fans. We're football fans. Definitely. Definitely. Some of us trying to. The trouble is, I get I get a lot of people on Twitter. Oh well, take, but we I speak. As a fan, there's a difference. When someone goes on the on the channel and they speak as a fan, I speak as a fan. All right, there's other fans that want, want to be want to be uh, pundits. They speak, they want to speak like that. But I speak as a fan, and that's what the whole channel is about. We're not, it's not about uh, being Alan Hans, the new Alan Hansen or the new Alan Shearer or um, whatever. Gary Lineker. You know? Yeah. You know what I mean, Gary Lineker. It's about coming from a fan's perspective. You, do you understand where I'm coming from here? Yeah? Definitely. That's what people, and that's what people have got to understand about it. That's what Arsenal Fan TV is all about. Definitely, definitely. Claude, it's, it's been a pleasure. We we can have you on every day. I, seriously, you know, it, it's, it's an honor. I'm holding up my uh, Highbury scarf. You know, don't worry about the dodgy connection. Um, no, no, it's, it's all, you know, don't worry about it. It's, it's across the pond. It's going to happen. Final question, Claude. Joe Campbell. Very criticized, sent on loan, gone everywhere, Spain, you know, every uh, Greece, and and they're like, oh, who's this guy? And now all of a sudden, he's he's the next guy. Now they're saying, oh, he can, he can replace uh, Oxley Chamberlain. Is is he the next one? Is, do you like him? Do you rate him? Uh, at the moment, Joel Campbell he needs games. He needs games. A lot. He gets a lot of criticism. Um, too much sometimes. But I think if you give him games, I think he can he can he can be a good. But he needs games to progress. I thought he was outstanding the other night. I thought he was brilliant the other night. I thought he was outstanding against Zagreb. I don't know why he was dropped against Norwich. 
but I think the more games you give him, the more confidence, and I think he'll be a, I think he'll be a top player. At the moment, the Ox is not, to me, I love the Ox, don't get me wrong, but the Ox is not proving it on the pitch. But then again, he, is, he has had a bit, bit of an injury, so let, we, let's not be too harsh on the Ox, yeah? Yeah, let's not be too harsh on Wilshire, who's also injury prone, and you know, supposedly he's the, you know, the, the, the savior of the English team, but he's always injured as well. Uh, Jack's not been for, uh, just had a bad run of uh, bad run of injuries, but hopefully he'll get back. Yeah, because he's got a lot of years in front of him. He's yeah, still he does. got a lot, a lot of years in front of him. Definitely. You know, and, uh, hopefully, once he gets that the next injury sorted out, we'll, we'll we'll see him back. But then he's going to have a lot of competition to get him back into the team because I think midfield we're, we're we are really well equipped in certain positions. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, definitely. It's it's good. That's what we need, though. We need we need that competition in case somebody goes injured and we have somebody put it right in there, blood them out, definitely. Claude, thank you so much. Uh, come on anytime. Come on again. It's all right. It's a pleasure. All right, Claude. It's all right. It's been a pleasure to be on here, by the way. Thank, thank you, for, Claude. Thank you for inviting me on. Thank you. Definitely, Claude. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you, man.